Hello everyone, um, this video is about uh, 3D printing with uh, nylon and a few colour experiments that uh, I've done with the, uh, the nylon uh, material as well. So um, Tom and 3D uh, have produced some, uh, some really nice uh, nylon for 3D printing. Uh, they've gone through a lot of uh, iterations and uh, this, uh, this is how it ended up. So we've got uh, this natural material, natural uh, nylon material called uh, 618. Uh, it comes on one pound coils, half a kilogram, and uh, is, is really designed uh, for, for 3D printing. It's not like uh, other types of uh, cheap lines and things you get for uh, uh, stripping um, weeds and things like that. This has really been well refined uh, and, and designed for, for th direct 3D printing. So it's got um, very little uh, warp characteristics, uh, has no sort of um, fumes or toxic types of smells, uh, and has a good uh, range of, of temperatures you can print at. Uh, I've been printing it down at about um, 210, 220, up to about uh, 240. Uh, some other people have printed slightly higher than that, but I found for me the best temperature to work at is about 235 uh, degrees C. So that gives me really good uh, layer bonding um, and uh, and a really nice uh, shiny finish as well. Um, so the material itself comes uh, natural. It's very flexible, uh, but it can still be quite easily pushed through bowed and extruders. Uh, I've been printing with it on a um, tantalus printer. Uh, it's very flexible, uh, but it does actually allow um, uh, printing on uh, on Bowden based systems. Um, one of the things to, to note is that you don't need a, a hotbed, a, a, a heated uh, bed to print on. You can actually just print on blue tape, uh, or actually the best material are uh, anything sort of cellulose based, so wood, uh, various woods. Um, you can print on these types of laminated woods. These are pressure, pressure laminated with resin, and they work really well. A little bit heavy. Um, and actually, the best material that uh, most people have found to print with is is this, which is Tufnel, and uh, well, it's called that in the UK. I think there are other other names for it elsewhere, but uh, it's uh, it's a weave of cotton and impregnated with resin. So it's a very very strong material, uh, and it has some cellulose fibres in here as well, which the uh, nylon really likes to to stick to. So it's fairly straightforward to cut. Uh, you can buy it in these sheets. It's not very expensive. I'd recommend getting hold of about two millimeter thick because it allows you to flex to help you get the parts off because they really do stick particularly well to it. So you can cut that down for the size you need it. This is one I've got for the Tantalus printer. Just clip that onto the bed and, uh, and it prints really well. Okay, so the other thing I really wanted to do with uh, nylon material ever since I saw it for sale uh, was to actually try dyeing uh, the nylon. Uh, it's something that Tom and uh, advertise uh, specifically on their website that uh, dyeing of parts uh, can be done uh, after printing. They don't particularly recommend dyeing the filament uh, material but that's something I specifically wanted to try so um, that's, what, that's what I've tried uh, um, doing. Uh, it's uh, Nylon is quite easy to dye. You can use uh, any type of um, uh, uh, fabric-based dye as long as it's uh, an acid-based dye. So the RIT dyes are very good. Uh, I've used a few different colours here. And uh, what I wanted to do is make, uh, have, find a really easy way um, to, to dye the, uh, the rolls uh, or sections of the rolls uh, in different colours. And um, what, what I actually uh, ended up doing was using the, the sachet of the Rick dye, um, mixing it up in a, a jam jar, a glass jam jar, with about 200 millilitres of boiling hot water, um, and actually putting it, uh, putting that into a Ziploc bag. So you just empty that into there, and then basically take the, the filament. What you need to do really is to uh, wrap it up quite tight and then give it a tie wrap on there, and put that in the bag with it. So you end up with the filament in the bag with the dye at the bottom and that basically dyes the bottom of the filament. Um, 
and that's actually what I wanted. You could dye the whole thing, obviously, in a in a uh, container, heated on, on the stove, or, or uh, just leaving it to uh, to dye the whole thing. But what I wanted to do specifically was to dye various sections of the um, of the material different colours. So I ended up with uh, a number of different uh, effects, and uh, got a few here to show you. This one was teal teal colour, so this was a, a sort of a, a teal sort of dark green and that was basically just uh, holding the, having the dye at the bottom and just allowing it to, to dye half of the coil. It's a little bit mixed up now but you've basically got sections of the, of the dye which are natural and sections of the dye which are teal and uh, when you print with that they look quite nice, they actually come out like this. So really give you a lovely effect and it's fades gracefully into one and the other, so you haven't got any sharp, um, sharp transitions of colour and they end up looking really, really nice. Um, so that was really encouraging and uh, that made me want to try uh, another one. Um, for that, uh, I used the uh, yellow and the fuchsia colour and uh, unfortunately with the fuchsia one, I was reading on the website that you should put some vinegar in uh, the dye if you help if you're doing dyeing it with nylon so I used the fuchsia and I put vinegar in and it really messed it up it seemed to just not work at all the whole dye just completely seemed to uh, um, uh, go to pieces and, and not actually do much dyeing so unfortunately with this one I ended up with uh, a sort of a light pink almost fuchsia but mainly yellow but it has got different different variations of color and again that was just half and half so Half of the dye was done at the bottom, turn it over, uh, and then with the other colour, dyed the other half and let them seep up and seep into each other, uh, again producing some nice effects. So the, I still get a reasonably good effect, but not quite what I wanted. I wanted a more deeper fuchsia uh, uh, pinky colour on there, but they do actually come out quite nice. And uh, some of the effects for, for that one are quite pretty. Okay, so the last one, I tried it with all three colours, because uh, originally I only, I only ordered uh, uh, fuchsia, gold and yellow and teal. I was trying to get hold of uh, a, a, a cyan, so I was tr what I was trying to do was to uh, produce a, a cyan, magenta and yellow, um, but I couldn't get a cyan, so I ended up having to use teal. And again, because the, uh, the fuchsia was not quite as good, um, this is one done all three, so this is done in three sections. I tie wrapped off a quarter and another quarter there, um, uh, sorry, a third and another third there, and dyed those in three sections. It only takes about 30 minutes in the bag, and you can take it out um, and rinse it in cold, cold water and then in warm water, or w warm water and cold water, and it, and it uh, uh, gives you a really nice um, uh, dyed, dyed effect. So I ended up with this, and uh, this one's really nice. This is uh, the effect you get with that one. So you've got sort of the, the lighter colours, the fuchsias, the orange yellows, and uh, these ones. These are particularly nice, nice models to uh, to print with this as well. So and you can see they're they're stretchy. And that's the other thing with nylon. It's uh, it's a flexible material, so it's quite uh, it's quite forgiving, uh, and it bonds very well. The layers are really really bonded strongly together so you don't have any delamination problems um, like you do with some other some other materials. So nylon's really nice and um, what you can do with it is very versatile. You can get some lovely effects with dyeing. I've just got uh, just got some more dyes today. I've got a royal blue and a, and a scarlet to try. So I'm going to try some more sort of deeper colour um, dyes and that'll give me some really interesting prints. Uh, but I strongly recommend you having to, to get get hold of some, some nylon. Uh, you can get it in 3mm or 1.75 and like I said it works perfectly well with a bowling setup or with a direct drive and uh, and it's fairly easy to use. It's a little bit like using PLA to be honest um, uh, although um, at the higher temperatures uh, that you're more familiar with with ABS but actually it performs very similar to PLA. It doesn't doesn't warp very much. Um, you don't need uh, uh, to have heated beds although you probably can and it would probably help a little bit more as well. So we'll, uh, I'll write a blog post up about this and uh, put some more information up on it and I uh, hope you have a go at uh, printing with nylon. So thanks for, for watching and see you next time.